So we're going to take a look at LM Studio again. We're going to download Llama 3, 8 billion and 70 billion. We'll talk about what all these different models mean and their sizes. For example, what is like this quantization, this Q number you see. So we're going to use this. We're going to have a chat with it. We're going to load it into our memory. We will test, like I said, Llama 8 billion, 70 billion. We'll also test the vision model, Lava, this Hermes, I believe. And maybe we'll take a look at the stable code instruct as well. And we may even try the multi-model session to load multiple models into memory. So we're going to run these models locally. I'm currently downloading a variation of the 70 billion. So while that is happening, I'll tell you how to start. You just go to lmstudio.ai and then download the version for your operating system. I'm on Windows, so I downloaded it. Once it's downloaded, just click on it and install it. And when you run it, you'll find yourself here. And you can actually do a search. Oh, by the way, before I continue, we will also be serving it from the server. And actually, from our Python script, we'll both we'll run stable code. We'll run the Lava, the Lama variants, and the Lava vision. We'll we'll test it out on this image, just to see how it works. How well it performs. Files to run your locally running Lama models or any other model for that matter will be available for free members and my Patreon link will be in the description. Also, if you're enjoying my content, you can find all the videos I made in their descriptions and their code download links at my website, echohive.live. Link will be in the description. We're going to figure out uh, quite a lot of fun stuff, but first things first, we just need to make a search. For example, let's search for Llama 3. When we search for it, it is a really nice uh, search results page. They are all displayed to you as rankings. For example, I just went ahead to the Pond Factory. And when you look at these models, uh, you'll see their sizes right here. This uh, Q2 means how many bits quantization it has. The lower the number, the less, let's say, less fidelity or accuracy the model will have. But then it'll be less resource intensive. I have a 8 gigabyte GPU. NVIDIA uh, 30 series on my laptop and 64 gigabytes of RAM. So as you can see, all these models predicted with this compatibility guess is uh, that I can actually, if I were to download this model, I can load it entirely to my GPU memory, which actually makes the inference much, much faster. So that's a good thing. But even if you don't have a lot of RAM uh, and, uh, and uh, sorry, video RAM, but you have RAM, you can load it to your regular RAM and run it on CPU mode. And the inference is slower, but it's not that bad with the 8 billion. Also, uh, if the model is large, uh, it says here that partial GPU overload is possible. So that's interesting. Uh, let me actually show you. If you go to the AI chat, you can actually load models and have chats with them. I'm going to go ahead and delete this chat and start a new one here. It's asking me to select a model to load. Uh, I already have downloaded the 8-bit quantized version of Llama 3. This was the line, I believe. And it's asking me that contains a different system prompt. I'm just going to go ahead and say, accept a new system prompt. So the model is loading, as you can see. And if you look at our memory, it should be loading now. Oh, it's actually being loaded to our GPU and partly onto our RAM. And if you come to this right-hand side, you can see the system prompt. But if you scroll down here, close these, we are actually utilizing GPU, GPU offload. You can actually uh, uncheck this. if You just want to load it to your regular RAM. But I'm going to actually crank it up. Once I do that, maximize it. There's also low, quick GPU offload settings, like low, 50, 50, and max. Now, if you have some GPU memory, what is recommended is uh, actually to start small and then increase this and see how your GPU uh, is responding to it. For example, we are currently only using 3.9 out of 8 gigabytes that is available. Uh, I know that this should load entirely to my GPU, so I'm going to crank it up to max. So we're going to load that. That means we're going to load the entire model to memory, uh, GPU memory. And I'm going to click here. Is that it actually may require more than the estimated RAM we have, 8 gigabytes, but I've done this before and it actually works. As you can see, it's going to load it into our memory. We are actually using 7.7 .7 gigabytes and it is loaded. So now we can actually chat with it and it's uh, actually quite fast once, once it's, uh, yeah. But this is how fast it works. When it's loaded entirely to memory, this is the Llama 3, actually 7, uh, 7 billion. I believe that's supposed to be 8 billion. Yeah, actually, we can come here to my models, and I do. Yeah, I did download the Quant Factory 8 billion. I'm not sure why it's showing here as 70 billion in the chat, but that is the correct model. So this is how fast it works when it's loaded to GPU. I'm going to go ahead and delete this chat and actually completely put the GPU acceleration to zero and load it again. No system message. So now when we do that, I have 64 gigabytes of RAM, and we'll see that the, now the model will be loaded entirely to our RAM, regular RAM. It does take a second. 
Okay, now uh, the model is loaded. Now we can actually chat with it. Now we are only using the model directly from regular RAM. And it's not it's not that bad. It's a little bit slower. As you can see, GPU is definitely faster. Just keep that in mind. Okay, the one model, the latest model is almost about to be done. If you are enjoying my projects, consider becoming a full patron, which gives you access to all my code downloads. Also check out some of my other tiers, such as AI Virtuoso number three which allows you to talk to me every month on one-on-one -on -one conversations and also AI Prodigy number two, which is an available spot. In. The benefit of becoming a patron is that you'll be able to download the full code files for any one of my projects. I work on these projects and, and uh, on a daily basis. This will allow you to start and get going with LLM powered apps really quickly and experiment and build your own apps. So let's talk about the 70 billion. If you search for Llama 370, this is the one I, I believe I downloaded. I originally downloaded this this one right here, the 5-bit quantized, which is about 50 gigabytes. And it says some GPU offload is possible. But when I tried to use it, I can't actually select it. It just is very slow. And you're going to see that it takes, it takes quite a bit of time to load this into memory. And it's just very painfully slow. I can actually offload the GPU, just a small, very small portion of the model. Maybe like something like maybe 10, 15 uh, layers of it. But it's just very slow, so that's why I wanted to download the three bit quantized version of it, which is just about done now. But right after I show you this, then we'll load that one model, and then uh, we'll we'll do some calling of the model from the from our Python code. Okay, the model is loaded into memory. As you can see, it's taken up almost all of the RAM. And if you try to talk to it, for example, let's say hi, and I'll let this run so you can see in real time. What is happening? It just takes a long time, and even when it starts answering, it's very really slow. Even yeah, see, we are getting almost like one token for more, uh, almost we're one token per second, maybe less. Even when I load part of it to GPU, it's still slow. It's a little bit faster, so that's why I'm just gonna stop generating, and I'm gonna try the other one, this new one that I downloaded. Let's load it to directly to memory RAM and test that out, and I will try to offload to GPU some parts of it, and I'll show you actually how you can use an incremental approach. For some reason, it wanted to load the model again. Okay, the model is loaded now. So now we can just try to chat with it. Oh yeah, it's responding. As you can see, it's pretty slow. I'm gonna stop this generation and set this to maybe 20 and read. So now it's estimating maybe we may go over just a little. Let's see what happens. You can watch our GPU memory here. It is being loaded and it took about 7.6. Still loading part of it to our memory. I mean, let's delete this chat and start a new one. Now let's say hello system message. Sorry for the beeping sounds, by the way. I know it's annoying, but it wants to load the model again. So I was having some issues, so I actually reduced the NGPU layers set to 16. Previously it was 20, and I'm going to load it again. So this should work this time around. Problematic part was that GPU memory wasn't being sufficient. So it's we are now using 6.8. I can actually maybe put it to 17 or 18, but it should be fine. Okay, the model is loaded now. Let's let's go ahead and say hi and see how fast it's responding. This is in real time, so we'll see how long it takes. So you'll get an idea of the speed. So it's actually kind of slow. Maybe a two-bit quantized version would have been better. I'm actually going to pause it here, and when it comes to typing, where we start receiving tokens, I'll unpause. This time we are using uh, 5.6. It's almost loaded. Let's go ahead and type our message. Okay, our model is loaded now, the 70 billion. Let's see how long it takes. We have partially loaded the GPU video RAM. Yeah, so it's it's pretty slow. So I guess this is going to be like that. I mean, I'm sure one two-bit quantize is going to be a little faster, but as you can see, it's just going to be slow. So let me stop this. You can actually stop the generation, and you can actually read all, all about these inference parameters and stuff. You can set these up, keep entire model in RAM, for example. You can also read about these right here. For example, what you want to do when the, with the, when the context actually hits a limit by default, maintains a rolling window and truncates the past messages. So we can actually call this model if we come to our local server and start the server. Then all we need is the name of this model. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this because I already have the code for it. The code for this will be available for free at my Patreon, the free members. Yeah, I just changed the name to the... Meta uh, Llama 3, 70 billion. So when we run this, this should run a chat loop. Okay, it's first giving us a message. Hi there, you know, I'm your assistant, something like that. There's the user message has already been inserted. We're just going to wait for this to be done. Okay, it's finally almost done, but this was really painfully slow. 
It was so slow, in fact, that let's actually go ahead and load Llama 3 and start 8 billion with that. Since I've changed the model, I'm going to copy. So by the way, when you're here, uh, you have the curl example, chat Python example, AI assistant example. This is the one I'm using. I'm just going to copy this and paste it here and replace the model. And I rerun the script and it should be now so much faster. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. As you can see, this is much more pleasant. Okay, now it's asking us, we can say, tell me a joke. And now we are talking to, we're running the 8 billion locally and talking to it. Why did the computer go to doctor? Because it had a virus. Okay, now actually let's, let's load the uh, Lava, the vision model. When you download Lava here, I just came here and searched for vision and I downloaded the first one. You, you have to download both the uh, model in the adapter. They're pretty small, so they are, I'm able to load them to my GPU. Once you download both of them, they are automatically connected. So when you're here in the chat, for example, you'll see that you don't see an adapter because they are actually, this vision had been added. There's a little tag right here. So we're going to load this up. Okay, now we can come here actually to Lava Vision. And this script just pretty much uh, allows you to enter a path for an image, which is going to be image.png. And it's, it just asks to describe what's in this image. So when we run this, we're going to enter image.png. And it's going to describe to us. It says the image represents a board game with a video game risky arena. The game's title is prominently displayed in the bold letters. So it's not very really good. At least it's an open source vision model. Previously, when I ran this, it actually said there were a bunch of TV screens. So it's not very good, but it's there. You can use it. Maybe you can use it to perhaps categorize images. Maybe I'll make a more detailed video on that. So this is all. You can eject the model like this. And let's, let's try this in the playground multi-model session. Let's select the load 8 billion. And then we'll also load the stable code instruct. Well, okay. Now that I'm here, there's this choose pre preset, which is default LM Studio preset, which I'll leave as such. But here it says in multi-model sessions, LM Studio only supports full GPU offload, and this is going to eat up all my GPU RAM. So this is not going to really work. But if I go to home and maybe search for a small model, like 1.3 billion, let's see what's there. Okay, there's the search for 3 billion and stable LM Zephyr. But let's just download the smallest one. And we'll run this with stable code once it's downloaded. Oh, by the way, in the screen, there's this little tab, which says, what's the difference between all these files, which one uh, I should download. So you can read about in detail, the differences between these uh, model indicators, such as the quantization. It all has to do with uh, how resource intensive they are. The smaller the model, the smaller the quantization, the less accurate the model will be. You lose some, uh, obviously, fidelity there. Okay, we have downloaded it. Let's go to our playground and load our models. We are going to select Zephyr, load it, and then we are going to select stable code instruct and load that one as well. They're both going to be loaded into the GPU. Okay, they're both loaded. We, here we can enter custom instructions to either one, and we have the model, I guess, multi-model prompter. We can chat right here. We can also start a server and communicate with these models from our Python script, but we won't do that. Send the prompt to models one by one, recommended, it says. So let's just go ahead and say hi. So this is Zephyr answering at first. And then the next one is actually a stable code. So this is pretty nice. I actually tried stable code from Python, running it here, and it just wasn't very good. As a matter of fact, the script has, has this part where if the large language model returns any code, it saves it to response.py. And this is some, one of the responses returned. As you can see, it's just filled with uh, syntax errors so it's really not usable but it's good for experimenting at least getting uh, accustomed to your, your way around to do uh, this was the end of our video but i'd like to talk quickly about my uh, opto streamer version 3 project the streamer version 3 is a iqt powered py installer packaged python project that i came up with uses your open ai api key to create course websites such as this one in real time this is also deployed at railway and including with audio so you have quite a lot of choices, such as six different uh, voice choices and over 50 languages that you can choose from. You can choose light or dark theme. When you go here to generate courses, you just enter uh, a course that you would like to generate. For example, we just did permaculture basics and I can pick how many chapters I'd like to generate. And I'm just going to go ahead and generate it real quick. It should take too long. Our curriculum was created successfully. I can go into view course outline and search for that uh, permaculture. And as I can see, ethics and principles, design methods and tools, and practical applications. I can then actually uh, select this uh, course outline 
and continue to generate the course light mode and then uh, the website will launch automatically and will be created for you in real time and you can record it as i'm doing right now or actually live streaming it's really up to you and once it begins we'll be able ethics to of care for the streaming. earth permaculture revolves around three core ethics one of which is the care for the earth this ethic i'm going to go ahead and pause it if I were to let this run, then this entire course will be generated live and I can listen to it live. I'm going to go ahead and stop. And if I were to let this course be generated, then it'll be under my view and launch generated courses. For example, I just created a course called Financial Basics for go ahead and launch. It's like this. I can actually switch to uh, light mode as well, I believe. Uh, I'm sorry, dark mode. And then I can re revisit this course. Both uh, I can zoom in. Both is in text and the importance of emergency funds. Yeah, it has three chapters which I can easily use. The benefit of this uh, and what you'll get out of it is that uh, instead of chatting with you in a disorganized manner, this allows you to create uh, structured courses that you can uh, run and listen to before you go to sleep or just fill your time. When you have uh, just five minutes or 10 minutes worth, you can visit these courses back whenever, anytime you like. So AutoStreamer, you can download a free demo for from autostreamer.live. I'll put the link in the description. Mac version is coming soon. You can, if you click on the download free demo, it will take you to my uh, Google Drive download. And these are the files you'll be downloading. Autostreamerdemo.exe is the same thing as this, except with limited features. And if you wanted to download the full version, then click on this, will take you to my Patreon shop, where it's currently only for $200 instead of 300. You can read all about it in uh, the website. You do need an OpenAI API key for this to work. And sometimes your this is a Py installer package, the PyQt Python application. So your McAfee or malware bytes may flag it as as not good. But as a matter of fact, all you have to do is just make an exception for the program. And if you have any questions, feel free to join our Discord or ask me a question that you have in Discord. Well, thank you for watching, and do let me know what you think of this project. I was really proud of this one. And like I said, the code files will be available at. Uh, Patreon. And I also have special tiers for one-on-one -on -one meetings with me, if that's something you're interested in. And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.